It's the Roy Rogers Show. Happy trails to you. It's nice to meet again. Happy trails to you. Until the journey's end. Oh, Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat, brings you the Roy Rogers Show. Transcribed on the Double R Bar Ranch with Pat Brady and the Queen of the West, Day 11. Happy trails to you. Time to ride And here he is, in person, the king of the cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. Here's my good word for today. It's about a honey of a new cereal, Post Sugar Crisp. And it's my hunch you'll like it just as much as we do out here at the Double R Bar Ranch. You see, Post Sugar Crisp is just downright good eating. And it's good so many different ways. Try it real soon, won't you? Well, sir, let's see about our today's story, shall we? <laughs> Paradise Valley feels like celebrating today. Young Fred Apt has recovered from that accident he was in. And more, the insurance company awarded him a good sum of money. So now he can buy a ranch. That's what Fred has always wanted. And everybody's pulling for him. Don Waters and his foreman, Burma Blum, are especially happy for him. In fact, only one man seems to be against him. Marion Connolly. And there he is on Main Street. Don and Burma have seen him. You stop up here by the general store and wait for me, Burma. Nothing doing, Mr. Waters. You may have trouble with Connolly. If you do... If I do, you want to be on the sidelines. You can't afford to be around trouble. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean, boss. Okay, I'll wait. But I'll be here if you need me. Connolly? Eh? Uh, what do you want, Don? I'd like to talk to you for a minute. Yes? What about? About Fred App. Some other time, I'm rather busy this time. Now, Conley, and here. There's been rumors that you're trying to get Fred's insurance money by palming off High Hope Ranch on him. Watch what you're saying, Dan. I want to talk plain. The High Hope is worthless land, every square foot of it. You're just... Fred fu- didn't work for his money. He got it for nothing. Why shouldn't it be fair game for anybody who can take Why, it? Why, you... No, no, no. I didn't mean that. Fred got the money because he isn't able to work like other men. He won't ever be able to work like other men. And I don't propose to stand by and see him cheated. I'm going to offer him decent property for his money. Property that will give him a living. Listen to me, Don. Now, you listen close. You kill this deal of mine and you won't live. I had my say, Conley. I'll see you later. Come back here, Don. Haven't time now. I'm a busy man. Oh, Burma. I'd like you to take the supplies on back to the missus alone. Sure, boss. Uh, look, it's not my place to tell you what to do, but if I was you, I wouldn't interfere with Connolly. He's mean. Somebody has to interfere, Burma. All right, you take the supplies on home. I'll ride over to Squaw Creek and see Fred before Connolly can complete his deal. <laughs> Good luck, Fred. You won't be sorry you bought my property. <laughs> Hey, come on here, fellow. Come, boy. Ooh, easy here, Pendle Weezy. No use hurrying on a mountain trail. Easy. Ooh, whoa, boy. Whoa, whoa. Somebody's trying to get me. Whoa, whoa. Look out. Look out. We're going over the edge. Ah! His horse must have thrown him all right. Sheriff, I think somebody better tell Mrs. Waters as soon as possible. Hadn't she been notified yet, Connolly? I doubt it. You see, I was on my way home from visiting Fred Apt in Squaw Creek when I found Don, so I came straight into town for you. Important as a back fence cat, ain't you? Pat. Well, piffle. Funny you didn't run into Don at Squaw Creek. He'd been there visiting Fred himself. How do you know? I met him there. He told me he'd sold Fred the old peach tree ranch. Oh, I don't think so. Surely Fred would have said something to me. The reason I'm so sure 
is that Don told me he had $8,000 in cash on him. Fred paid for the ranch with the insurance money. Don hasn't got 8000 in cash on him now, Sheriff. Huh? What's that, Roy? Just two $1 bills and 35 cents in change. Oh, but he died from the fall. There's no doubt about that. We haven't found any signs of violence, as there would be if he'd have been robbed. Well, there wouldn't need to be any signs of violence. Not if he was robbed after that fall. Oh, no. Nobody'd be low enough to do that. Yes, sir. Who was the first man to find him? Well, I was, but uh, I didn't even get off my horse. I rode for town immediately. What's the matter, Roy? You're all so sure Don was killed by falling from his horse, huh? Well, aren't you? Well, fairly, but I've been wondering what scared the horse enough to make him throw Don. Well, the wind might have blown something across the trail, or a chipmunk could have darted under his feet, or maybe a shadow. Or two or three bullets. Bullets? What are you getting at, Roy? Look over here, straight across the trail from where the horse reared. The boulders? Yeah. These three marks where something has chipped the stone. It's just possible somebody fired in this direction to scare the horse so Don would be thrown. You'll have to excuse me. It's it's hard to talk after hearing a thing like this. We won't bother you much longer, Mrs. Waters. One thing we would like to know, though, did Don have any enemies? Well, if he had, he didn't say anything about them. He was the kind of a man who never bothered his family with worry. I didn't even know he had ridden over to see Fred. All he said was that he and Burma was going to Mineral City for supplies. Burma is your foreman? Burma Blum. Don took him from the penitentiary when he was up for parole, and we've been mighty happy he did. We've never had a better foreman. He's been with us almost six months. Uh, Is that he coming out of the bunkhouse? Yes, yeah, yes, that's Burma. Why, where's he going? He's carrying his bedroll. Sneaking out, huh? Burma! Sorry, Mrs. Waters. See you later. But, but come here. Don has... Having his... time now. I'm busy. Roy, do something. Oh, Burma, Mrs. Waters needs help. Don has been in a bad accident. Yeah, I heard you telling about it. Mighty sorry. You figuring on going somewhere? I didn't pack my bedroll just to keep busy, Rogers. You think it's a good idea to leave right now? I do, Rogers, for reasons you don't know about. You better stick around a few days. We're not sure this is an accident. Fact is, we're sure it wasn't. Roy, you didn't tell me. Well, we're not sure, Mrs. Waterus. I hope you ain't insinuating I killed the boss. Not at all. I'm just asking you to stick around until... Rogers, if you think I killed Mr. Waterus, grab me while you got the chance, because I'm pulling freight. No, not if we can... I say I'm pulling my freight. Look out, Roy! Out of the way, Roy. I'll take him. There. Well, I would have took him. Only you always got to do everything in such a rush. Roy, I I wish you hadn't done that. Well, I couldn't very well help myself, Mrs. Waters. Come on, throw him into Nellie Bell's back seat and I'll take him into jail. Nellie Bell and me's carried worse stuff. We haven't any reason to take him to jail, Pat. Not yet, anyway. Well, do you have to have a reason? He'll come to in a few minutes. When he does, we'll find out why he's in such a hurry to leave, and that may give us our reason. I figured when I heard you talking to Mrs. Waters, you were here to frame me. You're wrong, Burma. Now, just a cotton-picking minute. Well, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's silly. Roy Rogers never framed anybody in his whole life. Well, anyway, I knew I couldn't stay here or there'd be trouble. I'm on parole from the penitentiary. I've got a record for robbery. Why, they they didn't even know about your record, Burma. You'd be in real trouble if you left. Yes, a parolee has to stay where he's put. Oh, the law would find me sometime. I knew that. But the boss has been on the level with me. He gave me a chance when nobody else would. I figured it's my job to get the hombre who killed him. I still figure it that way. Well, it's everybody's job, Burma. Not just yours. But it's mine in particular. And mine. What were you planning to do first, Burma? Having a settlement with Marion Connolly. The boss and him had trouble in town this morning. Connolly wanted to sell High Hope Ranch to that fellow who had the accident. Fred Apt? Yeah. The boss wouldn't stand for it. He told Connolly right to his face. He warned the boss not to interfere if he wanted to live. I guess Connolly forgot to mention that to us. I'm not lying, Roy. Well, it adds up. 
The sheriff met Don in Squaw Creek, and Don said he'd sold Fred some property. Nellie Bell, better start your generator. We're leaving. Well, wait a minute, Pat. Verma, just so you're in the clear, do you mind telling us what you did with yourself all day? Well, I brought the supplies home like the boss told me. After I got here, I worked on the water pump. Didn't finish till about half an hour ago. You can check if you want to. See that it's fixed. Well, that won't be necessary. You stay on the ranch and keep out of trouble, and we'll... What about Connolly? What about the boss? Well, we'll handle that. Your only concern is to keep away from trouble yourself. The boss was awful good to me. Well, you keep out of trouble. We don't want a killer running loose any more than you do. And you can depend on it. We'll take the man who's guilty. <laughs> Doubt Burma's story, Roy? Well, I don't know. If he made it up, he's got a good one. The Connor Ranch just ahead. We'll see how he acts when we face him with a few facts. Well, I sure hope we can clear it up. Mrs. Waters didn't say much, but boy, she was sure holding back an awful lot. Hey, what's that mean? Those shots came from Connolly's house. Somebody's after him. Come on, trigger boy. Let's go. Roy, Dale, and Pat turn into the lane, and as they approach the ranch house, they see Connolly standing in the doorway, terrified. In front of him, not 20 feet away, is Mrs. Waters, a rifle in her hand. Whoa, 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 oh, easy, Buttermilk. Oh, Nellie Bell, turn off your gas. Save me, Roy! She wants to kill me! Put that gun down, Mrs. Waters! Ah! ah! <laughs> Back with Roy in two shakes. Let's greet his pals, Handy Dandy and Candy, the three honey bears on the front of every package of Post Sugar Crisp. Hi, fellas. It's always a treat to see you. Post Sugar Crisp is always a treat, too. Absolutely. Sugar Crisp is the cereal treat that's fun to eat. This cereal is really different. Wholesome puffed wheat with a delicious candy coating of sugar and honey. And the three Sugar Crisp bears say that Sugar Crisp is fun to eat three different ways. It sure is. First, as a cereal, it's dandy. Sugar Crisp is just sweet enough. You don't need any sugar. For a marvelous breakfast treat, just pour on milk or cream. Oh boy, Sugar Crisp is great for snacks whenever you're hungry. Check. Sugar Crisp is really a treat anytime. And you can eat Sugar Crisp like candy right out of the box. How right you honey bears are. Sugar Crisp is good any way you eat it. And Sugar Crisp not only tastes great, it also gives you plenty of that quick food energy you need for work and fun. So, Mother, when you do the weekend marketing, remember what the three little bears say about Sugar Crisp. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp. There's only one Post Sugar Crisp. Look for it in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on front. Buy Sugar Crisp tomorrow. Roy, Dale, and Pat arrive at Connolly's ranch to find Don's widow already there. Gun in hand, determined to kill Connolly. Roy leaps from Trigger's back, starts toward Mrs. Waters. I'll take that, that gun. And, and I'll take, take it right now. Oh. Yeah, that's better. Steady, Nettie Bell. You all right, Connolly? Well, uh, I don't know. I don't know. She, she... She tried to kill me. And I'll do, do it, Mr. Connolly. I've been stopped for an hour, but I'll kill you before I'm through. The same as you kill, kill Don. Uh, Dale, come here a minute, will you? Sure thing, Roy. Uh, keep the gun, Roy. Don't let her have it. Why, Mrs. Waters, look here. You don't want to do anything like oh. this. Oh, I know he killed Don. You all right, Connolly? Walk over this way. You don't know that he killed Don. Oh, I'm sure of it. I'm just as sure as if I'd seen him do it. There couldn't have been anybody else. Hey, well, now... Now, watch her, Roy. You haven't any proof, though. And even if you had, it's the law's place to punish, not ours. He killed Don. I'm going to kill him. Hey, Roy, that woman is going to be locked up. Nobody's safe while she's on the loose in her present state of mind. Come on. We'll go up on the porch and rest for a few, few minutes. All right, Dale. But I'm not through. Don't think that I've quit. Uh, Dale may try to talk you out of having that woman locked up, Roy, but she's got to be in jail. I'll have her arrested now. Ah, uh, the whole trouble with her is she was late getting here. Well, 
I don't think that's any way to talk, talk to a man whose life is in danger. No. Roy, you could do something. Conley, at least two people will think you've killed Waters. But, but you and I know he died in an accident. I understand you and he had a quarrel this morning. Is that right? Well, we had a slight disagreement, but friends as close as Don and I couldn't actually quarrel. Burma Blum, he's Don's foreman, and Mrs. Waters think different. I'm going to send for the sheriff and ask him to take you into custody for your own good. Rogers, I absolutely refuse to be Pat, taken. will you drive in and get the sheriff? Yes, sir. He charge your Adams, Nellie Bell. We're all rolling for town. Oh, now, see here, you... I said protective custody. You're not being arrested. We're trying to save your life. Get going, Pat. We'll wait in the house until you're back. <laughs> If you want me to stay until the sheriff comes, I will, but I'm all right. They'll point it out to me how Don was always a man who believed in the law. What is it, Roy? Well, there's a gang of some kind coming up the lane. I don't like the looks of them. Oh, sure enough. That's uh, Burma gang? Blum in the lead. Burma? Roy, you said he believed I killed Don. Let's see. Why, it is Burma. And riders from all over the territory. They, they've come for me. Roy, do you think we can handle yeah, them? Don't let them kill me. Don't let them kill me. Now, get in the closet, Conley. Hurry. Stay there. Yeah. Don was my friend. Why, it's wrong to blame Keep him. out of sight. They're coming up the steps, Roy. You and Mrs. Waters better get back out of the way, too, Dale. Well, if there's any trouble, I'm with you. Uh, where are they? Uh, hold on here. Wait a minute. What is all this? We've come for him, Rogers, and we're taking him. Who are you talking about? Don't stall me. I know what'll happen to me for doing this job, so I haven't much to lose. All I care about is getting Conley before I'm caught. If it's Conley you're looking for... You he's... know it's Conley. Bring him out. These fellows with me, some of them work for the boss. They all think like I do, that the boss was the best man in the world. And we're not turning back until we have attended to the man who killed him. Burma! Don't put yourself in danger, Miss Waters. I don't want you to do anything like this, Burma. Well, somebody has to do it. The boss is dead. Don't you think I know that better than any of you? Well, his killer is running free. The boss... If there is a killer, the law will take care of him. Oh, the law. But before anything else, we have to prove that Don really was killed. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. I know how you feel. I, I feel the same way, only more so. The boss has been my whole life for... Almost 18 years. If there is a killer, we have to prove it first. We'll prove it. We'll open Conley's safe right there. And if we find $8,000 cash, we'll know we've come to the right place. No, Burma. No. No, the law. Oh, the law. What good is the law? Now, wait a minute. Are you asking what good the law is, Burma? Huh? It worked in your case, didn't it? I wouldn't have said a thing like that under any other circumstances, Burma. I don't believe a man who's paid should be reminded of the past. That's all right, Rogers. The law does work, and I think we ought to let it work here, too. Your boss believed in the law, don't you remember? And he was the best man you ever knew. Yeah. Okay. They'll be all right now, Roy. I'm sure they will. And a lot of the thanks goes to you. We're willing to let the law take its course, Rogers, on account of the boss and his missus. All we're asking is that you turn Conley over to us so we can be sure the law gets him. Sheriff Roy. Yeah, I see. Burma, now you won't have to bother with Conley. What's all this? Having a little trouble, Roy? Uh, no, Sheriff. Yeah, there's one man I can take care of quick. We're not in trouble. Everything's fine. Some of these men work for Don, and others uh, for his neighbors. They and Mrs. Waters were offering to help the law track down Don's killer if Don was killed. Oh, fine. Uh, now that the sheriff's here, boys, I, I guess you won't have to bother with the suspect. Let's go home, shall we, boys? Uh, if that's what you think we should do, Mrs. Waters. Well, I'm willing to trust Roy, Berman. I wish you would, too. Okay. Oh, uh, thank you, Rogers. Oh, you're welcome, and don't you worry now. I don't get this, Roy. Pat wrote in saying you wanted me to take Marion Connolly into protective custody because Mrs. Waters... Oh, now, uh, shucks. I might have gotten mixed up, Sheriff. Yeah, you might have, but I don't think you did. Roy, uh, have they gone? And I certainly want to thank you, folks. And if ever I can do anything for your benefit, well... Forget it, Conley. Uh, I guess it won't be necessary to take me into protective custody, will it? <laughs> way things worked out. The only thing, though, I'd stick pretty close to home until this thing's settled, if I were you. 
Above all, don't leave the territory. And why shouldn't I leave if I... Oh, yes, yes, you're all right. That's all right, of course. Of course I won't leave. <laughs> okay, well, we'll ride along then. Roy. Uh, come on, Dale, Pat. Sorry we brought you out here for nothing, Sheriff. All right, pull in your horses. Easy, Buttermilk. Oh, oh, oh. Nellie Bell. Who, oh, oh. Steady, Trigger. I couldn't explain back there in front of Commie, but he's not cleared yet. Well, I wondered. Well, he knows he's under suspicion. And if he's guilty, he'll probably take off within the next couple of hours. The sneak. Sheriff, you go on over and watch the entrance to his ranch. He may leave earlier than I figured. Sure, Roy. Dale, Pat, we'll slip back to the house and check on our friend. When the sun goes down, he'll probably go into action. Back with Roy in a minute. But first, the three Sugar Crisp Bears. We're the Sugar Crisp Bears and we want you to meet the grandest treat you ever did eat. Post Sugar Crisp. Boom, boom, boom. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Boom. Post Sugar Crisp. Yes, Post Sugar Crisp is the new delicious cereal. You see, Sugar Crisp is made of nourishing, wholesome puffed wheat, coated with pure honey and sugar. So enjoy it as a cereal. Just add milk or cream. It's already sweetened. You don't need sugar. And Sugar Crisp is a grand between-meal snack, too. It's rich in food energy. Or eat it like candy right out of the box. This honey of a cereal is good anyway. So buy Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on it. Easy as pie. We'll move on up to the house now. Come on. He's going to run away all right, just as you thought, Roy. We ain't got enough stuff in these saddlebags to stuff a goose. He'll leave the main things until last. Move over here by the window. Quiet. Watch now. Connolly's mighty busy in there. He's going to the safe. This is what we've been waiting for. Hey, does it strike you folks that Connolly may be getting ready to skip the country? There. The roll of bills. Deal. Does it look as though he's got $8,000 in that roll? Yeah, it could be. Maybe we'd better go right through this window instead of the door. I'll open it with the butt of my gun. Stay right where you are, Conley. Don't move. Stand back, Rogers. Don't do that again, Conley. I'll kill you, Rogers. I'll kill you just like I killed Don Waters. Let that gun alone. Don't try to pick it up. I didn't mean that, Roy. I didn't mean to say I killed Don. He and I were the best of friends. Just raise your hands and keep them raised. I'll take that money for the time being. There's eight thousand dollars here, is there? Yes. Well, no. Well, there, there could be. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure about anything. Well, maybe you're not, but I am. Dale, Pat, come on in. We've got the killer, and I think he'll write out the confession he just made to me in private. <laughs> That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you, from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again The Roy Rogers Show was brought to you tonight by Post Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat. Fellas and girls... Remember Roy's good advice and ask Mom to bring home Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on the front. You'll love Post Sugar Crisp. The Roy Rogers Show can be heard again next week at the same time with Pat Brady, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Rush production, tonight's show is directed by Tom Hargis, script by Ray Wilson, and music by Milton Charles. Come and get it, come and get it, for quick two-minute energy for work and play. How about grape nuts flakes? How about them, how about them, how about those grape nuts flakes? How about those grape nuts flakes? How about them, how about them, how about those grape nuts flakes? They are so good, good for you too, the two-minute energy.
strategy works for you. So how about them? How about them? How about Grape Nuts Flakes? Grape Nuts Flakes is one of the triple wrap post cereals. Guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. Look for Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal in the package with Roy Rogers and Trigger on the front. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Noreen Gamil, Nestor Piva, Howard McNear, and Bill Boucher. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Post Sugar Crisp. Stay tuned for the latest news brought to you by Log Cabin Syrup.